Well, 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 it's Friday the 18th of April, and I'm back on the chalk. It's Good Friday, and we should weep at what was done. This is episode 1906 of 301 Permanently Moved Online, a personal podcast, 301 seconds in length, written, recorded, and edited in one hour by me, at the JMO. credits of the new Game of Thrones episode this week, I loudly declared to everyone in the room that Lord of the Rings is better than Game of Thrones. Everybody disagreed and shook their heads at me, used to my arbitrary opinions. So since Monday, I've been thinking about why Lord of the Rings is better, or perhaps more important. So here we go. Lord of the Rings is the definitive fantasy novel, and its impact on the world cannot be overstated. The important thing about fantasy Perhaps the defining thing about fantasy is that it contains magic. Fantasy remystifies the world. It allows us to reconsider or re-see the world through eyes that are completely open to magic and the mythical. A facet of our culture that has been lost since the Reformation and the Age of Enlightenment. A lot of people will go on at length about the themes and threads of Lord of the Rings. Tolkien's views towards landscape and the criticisms he had of the Industrial Revolution. And just stop there. This reading of the book, in my opinion, is lazy and boring and also not the main theme of the story at all. There's a lot to say on the interactions and synchronicities between Tolkien and Jung's ideas, and I direct you to the work of Becca Tarnas to read more. But for now, let's think about the collective unconscious or the imaginal realm. Fantasy, as a genre, provides a safe container within which people can explore the world anew, with eyes open. In fact, the existence of magic in the medium is the clear mechanism that allows people to cross the boundary from quote-unquote reality and enter the world of the fantastical. What Lord of the Rings is actually about, it is an ending. The entire story is about the fading or slipping away of magic and sorcery from the world and the coming age of men. What once was is now lost, and the world is changed, as the opening lines of the movie make clear. The defining point of the return of the king is not the moment that the ring is cast into Mount Doom, but the departure of the folks from Middle-earth in the story's closing pages, when they sail to the west. The dwarves sail, the elves sail, Frodo sails, and Gandalf sails too. They leave Middle-earth from the Grey Havens and sail across the ocean, leaving behind them the Age of Men. The significant point of the story's ending is that the characters aren't dead. They have just gone away, to the west, and we can still reach them, if only we know where to look or where to go. They remain alive in our imagination, just over the next hill, as it were. Tolkien installed these figures in the west at the end of Lord of the Rings in our collective unconscious, so they could remain forever alive. Lord of the Rings is one of the first major works of 20th century popular culture to reignite the mind of the pre-enlightenment. Tolkien largely abandoned his work on trying to create a mythological history of England, but instead he manifested a mythic reality into modernity and gave them space within our unconscious minds to continue to exist. Fantasy, again, is a safe container to explore the mindset of our ancestors. To safely explore a world where people didn't travel very much beyond the market, unless, like Frodo, they went on a pilgrimage of their own that would take them well beyond the next hill. Secondly, the supernatural wasn't even questioned. Magic, telepathy, saints, holy worlds, spirits, demons were not held within a safe container of fantasy, but very much real, alive, and in the world, observable in the comings and goings in one's daily life. Our ancestors knew as much about the world around them by direct experience as we do, which, when you are honest with yourself, is actually very little, and like our ancestors, the rest of our world is imagined. What happens in other parts of the world don't happen to you, everything is imagined. As it much as it probably pains our quote-unquote rational mind to admit it, this is the truth. I've never been to California, but I can imagine it as a real place that exists over the next hill from the clues and information I've received from movies and stories and the people that have come from there. But there really is no difference between the Los Angeles of my imagination and Minas Tirith, and I apologise to the residents of the City of Angels for my misapprehension of the finer details of their lives as much as I do to the citizens of Gondor. There are just as many dragons at the edge of your own world map today as there were for the creator of the Salter world map in 1265. You see... When fundamentalists write essays about Lord of the Rings like But it's only fantasy, how demonic imaginations are changing the minds of a generation. They have a point. With every iteration of Game of Thrones, HeroQuest, 
Magic the Gathering, Conan, we summon these figures from the mythical age back to the realm of men. Tolkien's The West continues to build in power every time we draw from it. With every episode of Game of Thrones that gets made, we make the lives of those that sailed out from Middle-earth and into our collective unconscious more powerful. And that's why Lord of the Rings is better than Game of Thrones.